this video we talk about the concept of cost functions. So we have finished the production function. Next will be the cost functions. So we finished the production and cost. We talk about the profit. Okay. So this video first we talk about the definition of cost. How economists define the cost in an economics way. Second, we take a look at the cost minimizations by selecting the input. Third, we will look at the properties, various properties of the cost function. Finally, we take a look at the short run and long run decisions. What is the difference between the cost function in short run and long run? First, begin. Let's begin. First is the definition of cost. So previously, we assumed that in economics, so we assumed that there are only two inputs, capital and labor. So we just investigate the cost associated with these two inputs. For the capital, the cost is called rental. So we use the symbol symbol V to represent the capital cost. For the labor, the cost is the wage. So we use W as the symbol. Therefore, the total cost is equal to wage times the number of labor plus V times the number of capital and the profit okay profit pi will be equal to the revenue minus the cost which is equal to price times the output minus W minus VK so this is the basic profit equation okay so what we should do is to maximize the profit by choosing various capital and labor. Okay, in this case, we choose the capital labor, we can determine the output. By choosing the capital and labor, we can also determine how, so how we select the input. Okay, therefore we can generate the supply of the firm and the derived demand for capital and labor okay we can get these concepts at the same time so that's why we want to talk about the cost so next is how we use calculus to derive the cost minimization point so now this is the cost function this is the production function so we will do this okay we set up the Lagrangian function Lagrangian equation so this is the objective function and subjected to the constraint okay we'll put a lambda then q0 minus fkl okay so this is how we do, use mathematics to find the optimal k and l then you will partial L, partial the labor. Then it is equal to W minus lambda, partial F, partial L, set it equal to zero. Then do the partial Lagrangian function, partial K, we will get V minus lambda, partial F, partial K, and set it equal to zero. Finally, run Lagrangian and partial the, the Lambda, we will get Q0 minus F equal to 0. Okay, so this is how we derive the functions. So now we have three unknowns and three equations. Then we can find the optimal KL and output. Okay, so we can get some interpretation in this cost minimization process. The first one is, okay, W minus V is equal to FL divided by FK. So this is the RTS of L for K. So we can see that, okay, the RTS is at the equilibrium is equal to the wage derived by the rental. So this is the relative cost of each of that. Okay, second, so if we multiply FK to the left hand side, derive W to the left, right hand side we can get FK derived by V is equal to FL divided by W okay so here we can see that the marginal product of capital derived by the cost of capital 
is equal to marginal product of labor divided by the cost of labor at the equilibrium. So in cost minimization point, okay, the relative contribution to the cost should be the same. So if the left hand side is greater, then this is not minimizing because in this case, the firm can fire some labor and recruit more capital such that the output can be sustained and the cost can be further reduced. Okay. So the third interpretation is that V minus FK is equal to W minus FL, which is equal to lambda. Okay. So this is Lagrangian multiplier. Now you see that this is the cost to benefit ratio in the firms. Okay. So this is similar to the utility maximization. Now we focus on the cost. So this is the cost derived by benefit ratio. Okay. Diagrammatically, you are given the output given the ISO quant. So now you are selecting the appropriate cost function. Okay. So here you can see that you can further adjust the K and L to reduce the cost. So you re reduce the cost unless the cost function and the ISO quant intersect to each other. Okay. Tangent. The cost function tangent to the ISO quant. Then this is the optimal L and K combination that minimize the cost so this LC and KC so those are called contingent demand for labor and capital respective respectively okay so this is just a derived demand for capital and labor okay so now we see how the firm select the input. Next, we we're, we're going to see that we're going to see that how the firm expands. So we are looking at the expansion path of the firms. So as you know, the, when the firm expands, they may produce more output than they should select an other cost to benefit ratio. Say the now the firm expand okay from zero. Now they are expanding like this. Okay, so if the firm want to produce more, then the ISO quant go to the right hand side and they will select another cost to benefit ratio, the cost function. Okay, the, this minimi point, min minimizing point, then expand like this. Okay, so if they want to further expand Q3, then again another minim minimizing condition. Okay, so this is the expansion path of the firms. But the expansion path may not just a one direction, okay? So it may be another case like, like this, okay? Then you can see the expansion path. First, increasing both labor and capital. Next, they reduce the labor, okay? Maybe in the third stage, the ISO point is like this. Then they further reduce the use of labor. Okay, so this is typical in most of the technological firm. So they use AI to replace the labor. Okay, so this is another possible expansion path. In this case, labor is the inferior inputs.